Hello YouTube, my name is Flightsome Guy and I feel like such a jackass. I just spent the last 40 minutes rambling on doing a video. Only to figure out I didn't hit start start recording. So I am 100 percent sure I'm not the only person in the world that's ever done that. I am at KTZR Bolton Field uh, outside of Columbus, Ohio in the Saratoga T2C. I'm just sitting here at runway four, engines running. Uh, I'm not going anywhere, I'm just hanging out. And the reason why is I want to show you another program, uh, a really cool program that I've come across. Uh, it's been on the market uh, maybe about a year, year and a half. And the program is called FS Flight Control. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, here we are, FS Flight Control. Hang on a second. FS Flight Control, here I am at Bolton Field. This program is a flight simulation instructor station. Um, there's another program similar to this called Lewis Gordo's Instructor uh, Station or Instructor Control or Flight, I don't recall. I think it's Instructor Station. It's in the link. I, the video for that I did is in the link. And what this program does is it allows someone to be your uh, controller and they can monitor your flight. They can uh, fail stuff, uh, throw you curveballs to help uh, enhance the flight simulation training experience. All right. What I'm going to do is, I'm not going to use this program uh, in this session. I've already confirmed that a lot of this stuff works. I'm just going to go ahead and run through the features. First, I'm going to do this side, then I'm going to do this side, and then I'm going to come down and do uh, this right here. I'll try and get this done in the next 20 minutes. This program is pretty cool. All right. Uh, it's called FS Flight Control. You can fl find it at uh, fs flightcontrolcom It costs 50 pounds, 49, uh, 49 pounds, 95 cents. And um, it's very flexible, has a lot of cool features. Uh, setting it up for the first time involves a little bit of work, but it's not complicated. You just have to follow the instructions. If you're good at following instructions, you won't have any problems. What you do is you download the installer. It's about 50 megs. You go ahead and run it. If you're going to run this on the same computer every simulators, you won't have any issues. Just go ahead and run it, fire it up, and you're good to go. If you're going to run this program on a separate computer outside of your simulator, that's where you're going to have to do a little bit of extra work. You run the installer. It installs. Just click Next. Follow everything. And then to get this, to get the second computer talking to the computer with the simulator, what you need to do is copy a folder over to a temporary storage space on the computer running the sim. Go ahead and run the executable and then it will go ahead and gather some information, update some files, and then when that process is done, you copy the folder back over to your source computer, replace what was already there, run the executable again, and it will go ahead and configure everything and get everything set up. The website for this application has a video that talks you through the entire process. It's relatively straightforward, and it took me about uh, 10 minutes to do that. Once you build the database at the end, that process takes about 20 minutes to get everything set up. All right, and then you go ahead and load it. And when you fire it up, just make sure your simulator is running, and you will see this. All right, so let's go ahead and run through this. Um, oh, by the way. Uh, the information that this computer needs to see the computer that runs the simulator is the IP address and the port number. I'd like to think that if you've done port forwarding for that port and you know your IP address, if you provide that information to someone on the internet who has this program, they should be able to control your simulator remotely and that would explode or really unleash the value of this application. Alright, so what I'm going to do is go through here here and come down here. User, what that does is, all that does is toggles your plane and your label on and off. Three clicks. All aircraft, that toggles all the aircraft in your simulator on and off their labels. Three clicks. VATSIM, this toggles all the VATSIM aircraft in your simulator on and off with the labels. Three clicks. This will uh, log into the VATSIM system and get the AI traffic or get our traffic from VATSIM and fire it up in here. For VATSIM, we'll do the same for IVAO and Pilot Edge. Airport toggles the airport symbol and the label on and off. 
And if you ever get screwed up, center aircraft, that takes you right back to where you are. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. You can also use your mouse scroll wheel to do the same thing. And you can use the left click on your mouse to move around on the map. Center aircraft, it's right back where you are. Okay? Runway. Turns on and off the runway and the runway label. ILS turns on and off the ILS label and ILS feather. You probably want to keep the ILS feather on. Axis. I really don't need that. Turns on the axis and the label. Toggles it on and off. Outer marker beacon. Inner marker beacon. Toggles that on and off. Taxi and the park. Keeps that on and off also. VOR DME. So zoom out. It toggles all your VOR stations. All the VOR stations and their labels on and off. And NDB does the same thing for NDB beacons. Okay. Airspace, that's good to know. And there's the names. Airspace. And here you have your airways. And airways low. Waypoints. You can do the same thing with the waypoints. As you can see, this can get messy if you have everything turned on. And you have your weather stations and uh, here's a POI. So all this stuff labels and draws out the map of where you're flying. All right. So let's go ahead and center ourselves. Zoom in. All right, folks. Hold on to your butts. Here comes the fun part. Street map. What this does is it implements a real world street map and mixes it with the uh, the uh, what this program offers. Okay? And you can uh, do satellite. And I've confirmed that this satellite image actually is 100% accurate. Here I am sitting on the runway at Bolton Field. Height map turns on your terrain information. This portion of Ohio doesn't have a lot of mountains or whatnot, so there's not much to see here. This would be more valuable in a place like uh, Colorado with a lot of mountains. This find object feature allows you to find objects. Airports, the uh, VOR, DMEs, NDBs, waypoints, airways, you can just search for whatever you need. You can use this flight plan feature, flight plan mode. Uh, you can actually uh, use this to uh, do your own flight planning, but uh, if you want to use flight planning or do flight planning, uh, use SimBrief. But it's good to know this tool is available if you need it. Now, the flight plan information or the flight plan feature in here is simply a replication of what's in the simulator. These are your zoom features. I already showed your center. Trace aircraft. This is very useful. This is a moving map. Once you start flying, it keeps track of your aircraft, and you can uh, change how fast it refreshes also. The faster you, you uh, specify, the, the more frames it eats up. But once you enter or once you turn on trace aircraft, it leaves a nice little line behind where the plane has been. You can reposition the aircraft and um, you can go ahead and toggle weather information and uh, measure. You can go ahead and measure distances, uh, compass rows, some other utilities here. All right. Let's get down to the fun stuff. Failures. Now, if you have an instructor station, this is an instructor station for a generic simulator. Most instructor stations in the professional or the commercial world is specified or specific to that particular aircraft. In this case, it's generic, so it has to be an instructor station for the lowest common denominator aircraft, which is, in the simulator world, a uh, single engine piston, so that'd be like a Cessna 172. So, you may have a PMDG 747. It'll still fail stuff, but not, you know, it's not going to get into the details of what that specific aircraft has to offer. It has to cater to the lowest common denominator. So, still very effective, but you need to remember that. So, in this case, core system, I can uh, fail an engine. I can make an engine on fire. I can fail uh, components of the electrical system. Like I said, you got to keep it nice and simple. I can fail, fail components of the hydraulic system vacuum, uh, pitot, brakes, and whatnot. I can implement fuel leaks. I can uh, 
set condition for the leaks to occur at or below a certain altitude or at or above a certain time or I can fail right now uh, gear same thing flaps same thing uh, panel airspeed and by the way all these conditions as you can see apply as the same set of conditions I use across the board or I can fail it instantly airspeed altimeter altitude compass vertical speed I can fail any of those I can set failure to occur randomly and I can clear all my failures info if I have any feedback or questions I can go ahead and send them an information right here um, send a message Whenever you enter anything, or whenever you go to enter anything, it brings up a touchpad with the alphanumeric keys, numbers and letters. Why does it do this? Because there is a mobile app version for this. Isn't that cool? There's a mobile app version that will allow you to do all the stuff and uh, control someone else's simulators, or control your sim on a different computer. The app is available both for Apple and Android devices, and when you install it, the first time you run it, it asks for the IP address that this application is running on, not the IP address of the computer of the simulator. You want the IP address of the application. And you leave the default port, and then you enter it, you're good to go. And all it does is, all the app does, it remotes or it remote controls this application. So when you pull up the app and you click on, say, network, the network screen pops up on your Android phone or your Android device it also pops up here anyway the app is free you can just go ahead and download it and uh, you know plugs into here by the way I'm not sure if I told you at the beginning but you can uh, it's a trial period of 14 days so any issues with the application fill this a screen out hit send and uh, they'll get the information to the developers and they'll get back to you you can pause your sim. Let's take a look at the sim. The sim is paused. Unpause. You can square around with the view and the slew. See, I'm changing the various views on my simulator. Okay. Back to virtual car. So you can uh, screw with the various views. Fuel load, you can change, you can monkey with the fuel load uh, and the payload, uh, center of gravity, all that stuff. And send it to the simulator. Push back, you can push back the plane to wherever you need to. Motion, um, I think I know what this is, B runner. I want to say, uh, this is used for um, full motion setups if you have your simulator uh, custom uh, cockpit set up on hydraulics. I'm thinking that's what this is. So, you know, I don't have any of this stuff, so none of this I'll be using. Network. All right, so my computer is a simple, uh, my simulator is a simple computer on one device. Some people have sophisticated simulators where individual computers control uh, various components of the simulator. If you set up each of those computers to boot up straight into the application that does what it needs to do, you can go ahead and route or manage all those computers from this screen. That way you can power on and power off your simulator remotely using this component. Flight plan. You can do your flight planning here. Um, you know, it's an, it's an implementation of the flight planning component or feature within the simulator which is very, very basic. You need to do flight plans, you use something else, you use SimBrief. Okay, we showed you map and everything that goes with it. Uh, we'll get statistics in a moment. Position, you can go ahead and position anywhere you want. I'm at runway Fort Bolton. Let's go to KSEA, SeaTalk. And let's put ourselves at 34, right? And we're just gonna go ahead and position ourselves right here for takeoff and watch what happens in the sim. Now I have Seattle Airport and city scenery, so it's gonna take a while to load. Now while that's loading, 
it automatically paused. So, and I, I configured this application to do that. So whenever it loads somewhere else, it will pause. That way you can get comfortable before it uh, sends it out again. Um, what you can do is, what I like to do is, um, uh, if I want to position myself, say I want to position myself eight miles final, I'll go ahead and take off, and then you come over here and just say position eight miles final, eight miles final. That way your plane's already running, engines full up. Here you can tell the speed and pitch. You can configure the gear and flaps before you actually uh, take the new position. You can also configure yourselves on a certain set or a certain star based on whatever airport you're at. Uh, by the way, this uh, this application uses the latest set of Navigraph uh, data that you have. I let my Navigraph uh, subscription uh, expire, but whatever it was when it ran out, that's the data that it pulls in here. Okay, and it gets all of this information from your SIM. And you can also enter a custom location uh, anywhere in the world, longitude and latitude, whatever altitude and whatnot, and heading. You can go ahead and uh, place yourself there. Now, having said that, the simulator does that too, just that this remote controls the simulator. All right, so we're still loading up. Um, it's not done loading, it's almost there. But when it does load, the simulator will be paused. And all you need to do is unpause it. It's almost there. Um, you can also make sure the correct ILS frequency is, uh, once you have this checked, it's, it centers or it configures the ILS to pick up that frequency. You can set it for downwind, upwind, uh, you know, whatever uh, position. So this is really, really good. If you need to do training, let's say you want to practice touch and goes or you want to do uh, approaches or whatever, you can set yourself up over and over and over again. All right, so we're back over here. We're loaded. And let's go ahead and unpause. There we are. Also, in case you didn't notice, this also keeps track of it also keeps track of your frame rate, <laughs> which is pretty cool. All right, so where was I? We were at position. Very, very useful feature if you want to do training. Over here, you had failures. Over here, you can monitor aircraft engines, devices, and status you can actually close and open doors here. So it's not a failure per se, but you can still throw your, uh, whoever it is you're training, curveballs by coming over here and depressurizing the cabin, opening doors, screwing with the APU, um, screwing with the trim. So it's another uh, good area to come and uh, throw people off, off course. Whoever's controlling you can monitor your progress on the map where you're flying your altitude, they can come over here and see, they can come over here and see, you know, uh, the core status of all your instruments. Remember, lowest common denominator, it's not going to show you all the fancy instruments of a fancy aircraft, it's just the basics. You can also monitor the engine status. You can come over here and uh, the person can control your engines. For instance, throttle lever, I can make it 25%. And the, as you can see, it spools up the engines in the sim. I can also monkey with the propeller lever and the mixture lever. I can also come in and screw with all the engine switches. I can have complete control over all the radio and autopilot functions. Again, uh, when someone's flying along, you can come over here and turn off their autopilot, this and that. You can monitor and change all the light switches, and so on and so forth. All right, the statistics feature um, here says stop recording. It will record the last uh, few minutes of whatever you're doing, and you can uh, once you stop, you can go ahead and uh, save the data, export to Google Earth and whatnot. Unfortunately, it only shows uh, whatever it is that you're doing. It only shows it. 
uh, on this screen it does not do a replay on the aircraft map so if you want to replay what happened I think what you would need to do is in the simulator do a replay within the simulator it will show up here and that that's where you can do your analysis as you may recall the sim does the same thing this is just a remote control component but the statistics here it, it shows a lot of good stuff we did not talk about settings here you can monkey with and change the settings for this application it's all the default stuff I won't go into a lot of the details but it does give you a lot of control over what you can and cannot change uh, you can monkey with a port that the mobile device connects to um, you can uh, change the port that this device connects to the uh, simulator device evidently with a professional version you can customize your own executable that's pretty cool you can change the color of, of how various screens look you can configure what you want as your default uh, printer um, failures you can set colors uh, conditions you can specify or configure what you consider cat 1 cat 2 cat 3 uh, landings are and whatnot uh, you can come over here and screw with uh, your map in this case um, my refresh rate on my map I make it uh, I speed it up a little bit and these are other options that you can uh, uh, mess with okay aircraft related settings this information right here was pulled from my sim these are all the planes I have in my virtual hangar a lot of it are the default stock aircraft uh, some are my uh, personal uh, payware add-ons such as ERJs which we just saw right there and the Leonardo MD80 alright so here you can actually screw with the profile for each individual aircraft um, you know don't need to do any of this stuff so oh by the way these uh, screens that come up it's so that you can when it pops up on your tablet you can actually you know interact with them with your fingers or whatever so okay position here you can uh, you can specify what you consider short final long final and you can uh, change the parameters of uh, the various uh, position attributes you can change the map color attributes you can uh, change your pushback attributes you can change your failure attributes um, you can you know configure to your heart's content simulator related settings okay so with regards to uh, conditions I haven't talked about conditions yet here on simulator related settings here I have this application tied to P3D I have several other sims I got uh, FSX FSX Steam if you wanted to you can have this program configured for each of those simulators and you can come in here and you know turn on whichever one you want and uh, remote control that respective sim that's what this does okay you can specify new sims it works with explain um, and you can uh, configure this to your heart's content and you can add as many uh, sims as you want doesn't make much sense um, to me you're gonna be doing you can only uh, control one at a time I think so position for scenery reload and position change condition and third party now here you can tie in some third party uh, tools that you may or may not have Wilco Airbus Project Magenta you can uh, tie this application into those what I want to call out is this conditions right here conditions conditions if you want to monkey or if you want to be able to change the weather in your simulator don't select active sky select default flight simulator weather you don't need active sky running to use this why because remember in your settings you can tell it to you if you're using weather okay if you want to change the weather in the simulator don't use active sky I spent about an hour trying to figure out how this worked why I discovered is if you have active sky selected no matter what you do in the conditions uh, section where you can change the weather no matter what you do 
the weather will not change. If you want to change the weather, you got to come back over here and make sure it says default flight simulator weather. Once you do that, on the weather or the conditions uh, tab, current weather, you can uh, show us table, show us METAR, you can screw with those, okay? real-time weather so if you want real-time weather okay all you gotta do is check that it's gonna go out to the government's weather website download that and if you look at the simulator this is the real weather in Seattle right now All right. if I wanna clear that weather all I gotta do is go to weather themes uh, clear skies yes I wanna, di I wanna disable real-time weather and as you can see in the simulator, everything is crystal clear. I can go ahead and select the major thunderstorms. I can do heavy snows. I can do gray and rainy. I can do fog then. They all look the same if you ask me. I can do Orbix Weather 4. I can do clear skies. Let's see what else we got. These are all uh, custom presets. Now, in case you haven't noticed, all of the interfaces throughout this application comes with these question marks. That's pretty cool. What that does is it loads up your browser and it goes to that particular section of it goes to that particular section of the the user's manual which is good however what I can tell you is they have not updated the user's manual because I've been using this and I've come across several instances where the interface in the application looks different from what's in the manual nonetheless it's a very very helpful feature and I really really like it alright um, so I got real weather piped in here. I can come in here, I can specify ILS visibility. As you can see, I'm changing the ILS visibility and it's actually showing up in the sim. Let's go back to real time weather. Okay. And I can come down here and I can enter my own custom weather. This part is pretty cool. I can actually go out to uh, VATSAM or any weather uh, web page and cut and paste a METAR in here. Paste it in here. I had one before. It's still there. That's the METAR from uh, Vegas. I can enter it and I can go ahead and send that to the SIM. Yes. And as you can see in the SIM, that METAR was instantly overwritten. Alright. If I want to go back to real time weather, come here and real-time weather is turned back on if I wanted to I can uh, create my uh, weather presets all it does is it saves off a specific METAR and you can create as many as you want and you can load them and as you can see the simulator takes whatever it is that you loaded so this right here I think is pretty cool but it only works if your conditions is set to default flight simulator weather. If it's set to active sky, uh, you can't do anything, which is just very bizarre because like I said, um, if you can't do anything, it shouldn't let you do anything. But you can select active sky and then you go to the weather settings and change all you want, nothing actually works. It has to be set to default weather. All right, so I s essentially I skimmed the surface of all the capabilities um, of the uh, FS flight control application um, 49 pounds is kinda steep if you ask me <laughs> um, uh, but you know like I said if I can get this thing to work over the internet have someone on the other side fire this up and control my simulator while I'm simming it adds magnitudes of increased value to what you can use your simulator for. I have been doing a lot of, uh, I've been publishing a lot of videos on my uh, my YouTube channel as of late, 
Not because I haven't been doing any simming. I've been doing simming. It's just that I'm using my simulator totally different now. Since Flight Sim Expo, I'm using mine primarily for real-world training, which means a lot of time and effort setting up for the pre-fight, getting all the documentation, briefings, uh, approach charts, uh, airport diagrams, you know, doing all the checklist, and, uh, you know, I want to be a lot more professional about this whole thing. And this can help, definitely help with the training. So I'm considering getting it. I have uh, 14 more days, 13 more days to evaluate. Um, but so far, based on everything I've seen, I'll give it a thumbs up. Um, there are some usability aspects that I think could be uh, changed. Um, and the price uh, is a little bit steep, but I do like the 14 days, uh, the two weeks of free trial. I like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play with this for a couple more days, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. All right, that's all I have for now. Um, hope you guys found this video useful. My name is Flight Guy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.